Dans cette émission de Nouvelles de l'armée. In this edition of Army News. L'infanterie et les blindés unissent leurs efforts. Infantry and armor combine their efforts. Des militaires aident à assainir les eaux de l'Arctique. Soldiers help clean Arctic waters. L'armure vue de plus près. A detailed look at body armor. Et Zoro à la manière de l'armée. And Zoro Army style. Bonjour et bienvenue aux Nouvelles Alarmées. Je suis Sergent Pascal Nobert. Nous sommes fiers de vous présenter notre nouveau co-animateur, le caporal-chef Ian Tate du 2e PPCLI à Shiloh. Caporal-chef Tate, bonjour et bienvenue dans notre équipe. Thanks, Sergeant Nobert. I'm proud to be part of Army News. Now to our first story. Future company commanders recently polished their leadership skills during the Combat Team Commanders course. Mass Corporal Holly Cowan has the details. De futurs commandants de compagnie ont eu la chance de polir leur qualité de chef durant le cours de commandant d'équipe de combat. Le caporal-chef Holy Cowan nous en parle. We're here in CFB Wainwright at Survey Hill in the Badlands at the enemy's location, waiting for the combat team commander's course to attack. Well, the combat team commander's course is the, actually it's the Army's flagship course from a, an individual training perspective. And what we do is we take captains and majors who will be actually given command of an infantry company or an armored squadron, uh, we take them and we train them to command a combat team, which essentially what we do is we, we train these folks how to command that in an operational perspective across the spectrum of, uh, of ops. I give orders to all my uh, troops and platoon commanders that are going to be part of my combat team. Uh, what we did is uh, we have a line of departure and our boundaries are about 12 kilometers wide and we have to carry on for about 20 kilometers uh, south. So what we do is we have our tank troops leading, they move forward and when they encounter enemy positions we engage the enemy, we define the enemy and then we move our infantry into an attack position so they can destroy the enemy on the ground. As a combat team commander, you issue a warning order. So you decide from which way you want to attack it, and then you give tasks to everyone within your combat team. So you have a fire base, which are stationary usually, and they engage the enemy, and you have an assault force, which comes in from whichever direction you choose to assault the objective. And usually that's with tanks leading, and if you have enough tanks, you also have intimate support. So these vehicles will support the infantry, provide them hard armor as they move through the objective and destroy the enemy. In order to, uh, to provide this battle group framework that I referred to, you need a battle group. And in the case here, it's, it's a battalion and the armored squadrons, the recce squadron, the engineer squadron that's supporting that. It's what's required to actually conduct the training. And these are the folks who are going to be leading subunits in combat in operations. The objective was met, the battle was won, and after action report is now conducted. From the combat team commander's course here in Wainwright, Alberta, for Army News, I'm Master Corporal Holly Cowan. Un des projets environnementaux les plus délicats jamais entrepris par le ministère de la Défense nationale au Canada se déroule en extrême Arctique. One of the most challenging environmental projects ever undertaken by D&D in Canada is now underway in the high Arctic. Depuis une station devenue inactive, le réseau Doux, le sergent Catherine Grillum fait état de ce projet d'assainissement de l'eau. From a once active Doux line station, Sergeant Catherine Grillum reports on the water sanitization project. The cleanup of the dew line sites is closely monitored and tested by engineers and scientists. Here in Cape Dyer, I'm a team leader with the Environmental Sciences Group. That entails going out, collecting soil samples, wastewater samples, drinking water samples, barrels, paint, anything that needs to be sampled on site pretty much. I collected this water sample in order to uh, see if it met our wastewater discharge criteria. After we collect the sample, we'll analyze it and then we'll report our results and recommendations to Defence Construction Canada on-site representatives. We're here to manage the contract to make sure that when there's a contractor on-site doing the environmental cleanup work, that they're doing the work according to the specifications. We have five treatment or containment facilities that we've built here on-site. We've got almost 4,000 crates and bags of contaminated soil which are being shipped south by a, on barge. A lot of these landfills we've constructed, they're not totally full and they haven't been sealed on top and, and, and had the earth piled up. They're still almost pits. And what happens if we don't remove the snow at the start of the season, the snow melts and then we get water pooling on top of this potentially contaminated soil. So to try to avoid that, we remove the snow. 
We've had to sample a lot of this water that's ponded already, and uh, fortunately it's come back clean and we can pump it out. It didn't absorb any of the contaminants. This site should be done by 2013. The dew line cleanup at Cape Dyer is over 80% completed. For Army News, I'm Sergeant Catherine Greer-Hume. Bonjour, je suis Caporal Chef Cusson, c'est tout le temps qu'on va rapprocher. La technique que je vous propose aujourd'hui, c'est une technique d'amener au sol par clé de poignet. Avec cette technique, l'adversaire tombera sur le ventre ou sur le dos, puisqu'il peut arriver que l'adversaire tente de s'échapper de la clé de poignet en pivotant sur lui-même. Voici sans plus tarder les étapes à suivre pour l'amener au sol par clé de poignet. Une pression est exercée au poignet en tirant le poignet de l'adversaire vers l'intérieur avec la main gauche et en exerçant une pression sur le dos de sa main avec la main droite. Ensuite, le soldat recule en tirant l'adversaire et en l'emmenant au sol. Je mets de la pression, je le pitch. Faut que comme ça. Continuez à exercer la pression au poignet, même lorsque l'adversaire est au sol. Si l'adversaire tombe sur le dos, le soldat doit le retourner sur le ventre en lui pointant les doigts vers la tête et en se déplaçant dans la même direction. Je le tire pour qu'il finisse. Une fois que l'adversaire sera sur le ventre, placez l'adversaire en position de contrôle arrière. Squeeze, je vire ça tranquillement, les deux pouces en dessous, comme ça. Okay, S'il ne fait jamais une résistance, j'ai juste à faire la petite poignée. Point important avec cette technique, il faut toujours garder un bon contrôle sur le poignet de l'adversaire une fois qu'il est amené au sol, afin de garder la maîtrise de l'individu en tout temps. Sur ce, ne manquez pas la prochaine technique du combat rapproché. Body armor is one of the most important elements of our kit. La protection balistique figure parmi les éléments les plus importants de l'équipement du soldat. Our next story examines the improvements made to the existing vest to ensure maximum protection for our troops. Le prochain reportage nous présente les améliorations apportées à la veste par balle afin d'offrir la meilleure protection qui soit. It all starts with the fragmentation protective vest. It's very important that soldiers are sized properly for that and that they maintain it properly. If you're sized properly, this uh, fragmentation vest should be just below the uh, soft part of your throat because it all begins with the proper alignment of that vest. It's very important that the soldiers, when, when they're switching kit or getting issued a new kit, that they ensure that it fits them properly. Because a lot of guys like to get a bigger kit because it'll be more comfortable to wear, but it doesn't provide the same level of protection when it's not worn properly. Some of the big changes that the soldiers are, are seeing in theater right now to the protection equipment is the brassard, the throat protector, and the nape protector. The brassard protector here covers, gives additional protection to the shoulder and the upper arm. It's attached uh, via a Velcro piece here and a couple snap-ons down here and one, another one on the back. We've got the throat protector here. It's attached via the snap-on buttons here and on the attack, back of the tack vest. And then on the back we have the nape protector which is attached to the helmet uh, liner suspension system via these little Velcro pieces here, and it just uh, provides protection to the nape of your neck in here. The eye protection system is actually two pieces. It's the ballistic shield here and the ballistic eyewear. Uh, the ballistic shield adds more protection to the soldier when he's in a static position, such as on uh, a sentry or in uh, an air sentry in the back of the vehicle. And it attaches by a little kit here on the side of the helmet and it could be removed rather easily. We've also uh, added in a high contrast lens, which uh, in, enables our soldiers, their eyes to react more quickly when they're going from a, a bright environment outside, such as in Afghanistan, to the interior of a building. It's been very well received and the soldiers are also finding that uh, it helps them pick up soil disturbances and trip wires. We've added the visual warning technology device lens and you can see the similarity in colors here for the, uh, for the two lenses. Uh, the visual warning technology device 
lens is a, is a special issue to operators of the, of the laser dazzler. To help mitigate uh, using the, the wrong lens with the visual warning technology device, we've put the initials VWT for visual warning technology and the frequency numbers so that you, you can readily see that it's a laser lens and not the high contrast lens. And another special issue lens we have is the, uh, this green one here and it's a, it's a laser lens that will be issued to specialty crews such as FUFAC teams or the, the crews of the Leopard tanks. And one of the improvements that we're starting to look at now is the, uh, the dead, hand, dead man's handle on the vest, uh, which is a result of uh, just feedback from the soldiers, verbal feedback, nothing uh, written down. And it's been supported by the chain of command, so we're starting to actively look at that. With protection equipment, we're never at a stalemate. We're always looking at how to improve it, encourage, protect our soldiers more. And uh, the, the front line on that is the soldier himself. And so far, everything we've done has been completely reactionary to requirements in Afghanistan that we need done now. That's probably not going to change in, in the very near future when it comes to protection equipment, because once it's identified, it's, it's important that we do it now and get it to the soldier. Good day, everybody. I'm General Walton Atinchik, the Chief of Defense Staff, and you're watching Army News. Après deux ans seulement d'expérience en escrime de compétition, le caporal Hugues Boisvert-Simard est passé de la 90e à la 11e place au niveau militaire international. Le caporal-chef Jonathan Johansson a rencontré cet espoir olympique à l'entraînement. After only two years of fencing competitively, one of our CF members has moved from 90th to 11th place at the international military level. Mass Corporal Jonathan Johansson met this Olympic hopeful during training. C'est un sport qui a une immense intensité. Il faut être très proche pour pratiquer le sport, puis ça se passe extrêmement vite. Il ne faut pas faire d'erreur non plus. Le, le but, c'est pas mal de créer l'autre, d'amener l'autre à, à faire une erreur et d'en profiter. Donc, il faut tout le temps être aux aguets pour prendre avantage des erreurs de l'autre et s'en en faire nous-mêmes. Ce qui, ce qui crée une immense tension euh, au courant du match. C'est ça qui est vraiment le plus, le, le plus intéressant de ce sport. -là. Moi, j'ai commencé assez tard. J'ai commencé à 19 ans. Ça fait 9 ans à peu près là, que j'en fais. Au sein des forces, il y a plusieurs escrimeurs, surtout basés à Kingston, euh, au Collège militaire royal. Ça fait plusieurs dizaines d'années qu'il y a un club intramural là qui fait le, le circuit ontarien universitaire. Et puis depuis 2007, c'est devenu euh, un sport à l'essai dans les forces. Et depuis 2009, c'est un sport officiel. Donc à Kingston, il y a au moins une soixantaine de scrimeurs qui vont faire les différents tournois internationaux militaires. Et depuis deux ans, j'ai passé de 90e mondial à 50e, à 22e à la fin d'année, puis là, je suis rendu 11e. Donc depuis deux ans, ça va vraiment très, très bien. Au niveau du classement de la Coupe du monde, Hugues est celui qui s'est le mieux classé. On a eu déjà de très, très bons résultats parce que le club est assez performant depuis des années. Mais au niveau de la, du classement de la Coupe du monde, c'est le meilleur classement qu'on a obtenu jusqu'à présent. Ah ben, idéalement, comme n'importe quel entraîneur qui fait un sport olympique, on aimerait bien que, que Hugues euh, soit champion olympique. Et s'il y a un escrimeur au Canada en ce moment qui peut espérer être euh, un champion olympique, c'est bien. Thanks for watching this edition of Army News. Be sure to send your suggestions and story ideas to armynews at forces.gc.ca. Merci d'avoir regardé ce bulletin des nouvelles de l'armée. N'hésitez pas à nous envoyer vos commentaires et vos idées de reportage à l'adresse suivante nouvelles de l'armée@force.gc.ca. Stay up to date on all Army news stories every day by following our Twitter feed at twitter.com/armynews. Tenez-vous au courant des reportages de Nouvelle de l'Armée en suivant notre fil de nouvelles sur Twitter à twitter.com baroblique Nouvelle Armée. I'm Mass Corporal Ian Tate. À bientôt. Et je suis Sergent Pascal Nobert. See you next time.